Bottle flipping. It's probably less popular than it once was, but children are still going to have a fantastic time having a go. So why not incorporate it into your next science lesson? I have two experiments to share with you, one on volume and the other on viscosity. Let's have a look at the first experiment now. That took me about eight tries to get that. <laughs> Bottle flip volume of water science experiment. The aim of this experiment is to find the best amount of water to add to a bottle to make it the perfect bottle flip. With a bottle, funnel, jug and some water, children will add different amounts of water to a bottle before flipping them to discover the results. Before we start, we need to fill in the hypothesis and fair test section on the provided sheets. Once completed, children can work in pairs to flip the bottle with different amounts of liquid, recording their results on the provided table. Children plot this information in a graph before concluding their experiment and looking back at their hypothesis. Maybe children could even look at each other's results and compare them against their own. At the bottom of the resource, there's also a little explanation as to why having the bottle about a quarter to a third full usually yields the best results. Experiment number two, bottle flip viscosity science experiment. Using a bottle, a funnel and three liquids of different viscosities, children will investigate how the viscosity of a liquid, how thick a liquid is, affects bottle flipping. Similar to the previous resource, kids will fill in the table with the information before drawing a conclusion. They'll also answer discussion questions like, how do you think the viscosity of a liquid affects a bottle when flipping it? And why do you think this is happening? Finally, there's a sciencey bit where children learn about why the runniness of a liquid has a massive effect on how easy it is to flip, as well as why the volume of a liquid makes a big difference too. As an extension, maybe children could use some different materials, such as solid materials like sand or beads. You could even introduce non-Newtonian liquids such as toothpaste, honey, or maybe even custard, as long as you don't mind clearing out the big mess that's going to be left after your experiment. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you have a lovely day.